This is the way we talk in Tucson, Arizona. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's it's The Wrestling Life. We're back. It is episode 349. Uh, we're in the first week of October now of 2023. I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans. I'm Liam. Liam, we really do have so much to talk about this week. Yes, and as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. So here's how things broke down, everyone. We uh, we were doing a podcast, and then uh, we took a planned week off, mm-hmm. and then uh, we kind of had a surprise week off when I had to travel, uh, and my schedule got switched around at the last minute, and I could not do a show. And then there was a week where you had COVID, and then there was a week where I had a migraine. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, we weren't doing a wrestling podcast anymore. But I guess we're <laughs> I guess we're back. There's a, there's a very fine line between you're doing a wrestling podcast, you've been doing a wrestling podcast for nine years, and then all of a sudden you're not doing a wrestling <laughs> podcast. And then hope hopefully we're back on the side of we're definitely doing a wrestling podcast. Well, we're here now, so we're we're off to a good start. If we're trying to get back on uh, trying to get back on track, yes. A um, few things have happened in wrestling. <laughs> the rated R superstar Adam Copeland has debuted in AEW. I think we were on the record as saying it was better than fifty fifty that he was going to go there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe at least one of us is on the record saying that. I think so. Any, anyway, were you surprised? How surprised were you? Uh, what do you think of the prospects of uh, Adam Copeland, the rated R superstar, <laughs> in all elite wrestling? First of all, they like we we talk all the time about how WWE has their nicknames that they have to constantly say. You can't ever yes. just say the person's name; you have to say their nickname. You know, the Seth freaking Rollins, the Dirty Doms, etc. The ballsy but, badass Shotzi. That's right. Yes, so they, you know, everybody, and boy, did they set a record. And obviously, it's because they can't call him Edge, but they're trying to get maximum value out of, I guess, the one trademark from his WWE time that they were able to get a hold of. Sure, um, it's, it's it's not the end of the world. But if yeah, they set like a record for the amount of time saying rated our superstar Adam Copeland uh, between the uh, his debut on the Wrestle Dream show. The post, uh, the post show press scrum, and then dynamite this week. Uh, so just it, the the rated R superstar, just million, million, million times. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, I was not surprised to see him go. I think we, as we we have discussed, the pros of it for him. Uh, there's new, there's a new sheriff in town in the other place who probably isn't looking to pay $3 million a year to a guy who quite frankly has not meant a lot of positives for their business um, over, over his, over his most recent run. Um, And obviously he has a lot of friends like, like Christian cage, like Chris Jericho and Renee and whoever else over here. He has a lot of, a lot of uh, familiar faces and uh, new people to work with, as he said in his, his first promo. So yeah, I, I don't, I can't think of a single thing I would have wanted to see him do if he stayed in WWE. Uh, Long time listener will remember. I've not been a fan of Mr. Copeland's work over the last couple of years. Um. I'm not also not that jazzed to see him in AEW, but <laughs> I'll just say that, you know, when John Moxley left WWE, no one I wanted to see less than Dean Ambrose on my television ever again. And he completely reinvented himself by going to New Japan and going to AEW. So maybe Adam will do the same, though it doesn't seem likely because he's got his WWE music and he does his WWE entrance. And I mean, we've only had one promo so far, but he's cut a promo pretty much the same way Edge cut a promo. So we'll see. Um, But hey, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of excitement around him interacting with Christian for the first time in a long time. Well, Tony Khan for sure was very excited about it because he tweeted it out, go F yourself, uh, like six times. 
on Wednesday night, uh, which is what <laughs> what Christian uh, told Edge mm-hmm. um, in their in in ring interaction. But uh, and one time he tweeted it with context, and another time he tweeted it without context. So you maybe thought that he was just telling everyone to go f themselves, which really <laughs> would have been a, a huge relief for me. However. <laughs> However, he was referencing there. He's very jazzed to have Edge and Christian in his company. They never really did the nostalgia um, tag run True. after they split 20 years ago, um, 20, 21 years ago. So I can't think of any even like one off. I'm sure they did a one off or two. They tagged a couple times leading up to Edge's retirement against del rio like he and christian okay. repaired it was like him against del rio and ziggler or brodus clay or whoever was sure whoever sure. was around on smackdown in that era sure uh, i was thinking there was probably a few of those but as far as like an actual run nostalgia run we haven't got that yet doesn't look like we're getting that anytime soon he's going to be a weekly character hmm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, one thing, whether, look, I don't think it was tenable to keep Phil Brooks around. We've, we've, that (laughs) ship is, but in his absence, you do need additional star power if you're going to try to run three shows a week, I guess. That's fair. That's definitely a fair point. So Saturday's kind of become the Danielson show. Mm -hmm. Um, Wednesday is your uh, wonderful variety show. And Friday is uh, is dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I assume we're going to be seeing a lot of him on Wednesdays. But uh, he is going to be on collision this week. And his first match will be against the Luchasaurus <laughs> on next week's Tuesday Dynamite. Which is going head to head with NXT. We will have much more to say about that in a moment. Uh, there was a uh, five and a half hour Wrestle Dream pay per view on Sunday, followed by a two and a half hour media scrum. This programming began at six thirty p.m. Eastern time, and the media scrum signed off at three a.m. Eastern time. <laughs> what are we doing here? Not even a hol- not even a bank holiday Monday either. Just a random. Sunday night in October. Un-effing believable. <laughs> I, look, I complaining about shows being too long when you don't care how long the shows are and it doesn't impact your life how long the shows are, people <laughs> make fun of that. And they're like, there's nothing people who work in wrestling hate more than watching wrestling. Tell you what. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. No show needs to be five and a half hours long. No media scrum needs to be two and a half hours long. We need to, everyone over there needs to get a grip. Anyway, uh, four pre match, uh, pre show matches, excessive, extremely excessive. <laughs> a, uh, an eight mixed eight person tag seemed to be, um, a partner seemed to be chosen by throwing darts at a poster. Uh, Josh Barnett, a former UFC world heavyweight champion. Uh, wrestled Claudio Castagnoli for eight minutes on the pre-show. Sure, why not? The Luchasaurus beat Nick Wayne, which really doesn't make sense considering what happened in the main event angle where Nick Wayne uh, sided with Luchasaurus and turned on Darby Allen. And then the Acclaimed uh, beat uh, three New Japan guys. Great. <laughs> uh, MJF beat the Righteous to retain the ROH World Tag Team titles. Adam Cole needs two surgeries to fix his broken ankle that he broke jumping off the ramp at uh dynamite grand slam that guy's cursed yeah the, com- the company's cursed mjf is still the roh world tag team champions and the AEW world champion he worked a wwf uh bushwhackers house show match straight out of 1989 on this show um uh, yeah and then i think it's fair to say that the pay-per-view began in earnest uh <laughs> roughly two hours after it started what do you think yeah, I mean, it was. It, I didn't think there was anything wrong with this with this show, and there was good wrestling on it. Um, 
you know, Danielson and Sabre Jr. was awesome. Um, main event was a spectacle. Uh, sure. sure. But boy, man, you know, one of those one of those shows that if uh, if you didn't do a wrestling podcast, <laughs> not sure I would have watched it because, uh, you know, it's it's it just it was just a bunch of stuff. I like I like taking minutes for a lot, too. Um, but sure. Um, but again, that's amount of good wrestling has never been <laughs> has never been a problem for AEW. Um, absolutely not but uh yeah i thought the show overall uh it didn't it it lacked anything i mean i guess Dan, like i said i really like danielson and saber that was different than your garden variety good to great aew match that you might see on dynamite every week but uh otherwise kind of just par for the course for for better and worse other than our big angle at the end which we've already touched on with uh the rated our superstar Adam Copeland. Sure. And Kingston beat Shibata to keep the uh, ROH and New Japan strong titles. Chris Statlander beat Julia Hart to retain the TBS title. Julia Hart has just gotten over, uh, at least with me. I think she's good now. She's actually good now. She and, has uh, shown much more improvement in like this, this little like three month run than other people have shown in like two years so and now she's taking time off to get married i guess yep (laughs) all right (laughs) sure sure why not we wish them well Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the best to them to the happy couple um the young bucks won a four-way uh spot fest for the a future tag team title shot we're getting the bucks and ftr again all right doesn't feel fresh, um, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, Bucks, uh, Bucks. I mean, the next pay per view uh, is in the Bucks backyard, so it seemed yep. like a, a spot to do that match. Maybe, maybe they main event the show this time. Maybe so. Swerve beat Hangman. You like that match? Um, who's uh, whose Cheerios did Hangman piss in? <laughs> Well, I think what's happening is we're doing we're doing some lore. <laughs> ah, and the lore is that Hangman has like backslid into uh alcoholism he, and depression. Uh, yes. <laughs> and maybe being with the elite actually isn't a good thing for him. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and that he was actually <laughs> better and more self-reliant on uh, when he was when he was on his own. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they're going for here. Um, okay. Yes, as it stands now, uh, he lost to Swerve, and he looks prepared to lose to uh, Jay White on Dynamite next week. So they're they're doing something with this guy. But yes, the whole storyline, as the the promos with Swerve leading up to the match, are all about how he's fallen off and he barely wrestles singles matches anymore. And uh, he's not as big of a star as he should be. <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre. Like the heel probably shouldn't say mean things about the baby face that are uh, abundantly true. <laughs> Correct. Especially when it's like tied to the the way his career is booked, like his fake matches yeah. are booked. Like yeah. never, never a fan of that when, when we're talking about, you know. You know, he hasn't ha- talking about how Hangman hasn't been booked in singles matches for six months. It's like, well, Hangman doesn't isn't the general manager of AEW. He doesn't get to decide who he wrestles, as far as I know. Right. Yeah, that's odd. It's also odd. It's just so odd that they hate beating anyone ever, and mm-hmm. so it's very clear, or very odd to see someone clearly on the ascent in swerve and someone clearly on the descent in hangman it's like they always muddy everything and try to protect everyone mm-hmm. and this is very good i mean good for swerve yeah but it's like very clearly swerves on the way up hangman is not on the way up <laughs> yes <laughs> so that's that uh you pointed out why ricky starks beating wheeler yuta was on this show yeah we don't want ricky to have a boo-boo face and and subtweet the show yeah 
yeah, that doesn't seem like a, a very tenable situation either. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's maybe he's working, working, working the sheets. I don't know. But seems like a guy, his best friend works for the other guys. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't. And I, I, I don't know when I don't know when his contract's up, but doesn't feel like a, a guy who. Uh, is putting his full gusto into his work at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah, frankly, who could blame him? There's so sure. much start and stop with him. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't blame the guy for uh, being a little disenchanted. No question. Sure. Uh, Danielson beat Saber. Um, I was working, and uh, I couldn't really watch this, but almost everyone seems to be raving about it, and you uh, are no exception. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was very good. Um, and as they talked about in their little, they did, I think they did, I don't know if they played any of it on dynamite. I think they did play Danielson's interview on dynamite, but they did. Um, the, the whole story being that Danielson couldn't out wrestle him, but he knocked him out to win. I thought so like the, the, I thought the, everything playing into the finish, I thought was very clever. And obviously they're going to do, going to do this again at some point, uh, in Japan next year, I guess. So we'll see. Or in America, in San Jose, in January. Could be. A lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. A lot of possibilities, yes. <laughs> um, one match that went way too long was uh, the Don Callis family oh. of Takeshita Osprey and Sammy Guevara against Jericho, Omega, and Ibushi. Um, Takeshita and uh, Osprey are fantastic. Um, Guevara... At least he's a heel again. I don't know. He's turned 46 times, but he, at least he's he's a heel again. Um, Jericho. How many, how many times can you repackage the British Bulldog? Let me ask you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. There was the time where he had the dreadlocks and then yeah. he had he had jeans. <laughs> yeah, there was the cornet. Uh, There's like where he's managed by cornet and Mr. Fuji for some reason. With, well, with Yoko right. and Owen. Yeah, well, because Fuji was the manager, but Fuji couldn't cut no promos. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, he had so they, they... but he had a job for life anyway. Exactly. He was a Vince Senior guy, so <laughs> he had a job for life. <laughs> so then they had to get somebody, a manager, to go out and cut, who could go out and cut promos. Unbelievable. Absolutely hilarious. <sighs> and uh, we got 30 years of Jim Cornette since because of that yep <laughs> uh, anyway more, more harm than good i think <laughs> tell um, you what i do enjoy jim Cornette ranting and it's very fun when you and jim Cornette have a common enemy <laughs> <laughs> if there's someone that you don't like and jim also doesn't like him oh boy that guy can cut a promo like nobody's business Unfortunately, he has a lot of very problematic takes and very problematic ways of saying those takes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As you like to point out, proof that Democrats can be bad people, too. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. Conservatives do not have a do not have the market cornered on being assholes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Anyway, I have no use for uh, the Don Callis family against Jericho, Omega, and Ibushi. Ibushi doesn't look like he can do a single thing in the ring anymore. <laughs> um, Kenny Omega uh, can work. Chris Jericho has got his hooks in Kenny Omega now. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the long... I thought about this more so watching Dynamite, I guess. But it's yeah. like when Takeshita turned and Don and Takeshita turned, Right. It was like the hottest thing on the show. Yeah. And it felt like a big time deal. And it was a big singles program that they're going to ele elevate this new guy. And now it's about Don Callis and Chris Jericho somehow. <laughs> somehow this is more from a let's elevate Takeshita and give Kenny his first marquee singles program in like two years to a tag team feud with Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega against Takeshita and now Will Hobbs, as we saw on Wednesday night. So yes, yes. Just, and Sammy Guevara, who we've turned and turned back for the 18th time. Uh, yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know. That's man. correct. It's just it's just a little, it's just a little depressing. It's just sure is. <laughs> sure is. It's just like he did it again. I don't understand how Jericho keeps doing. This. I mean, I do because he has a lot of. He He's can, the Booker's favorite wrestler, right? right. And he basically <laughs> books his own stuff. So right. Uh, he decided he wanted to do a. He's like, well, somebody else is doing a feud with Don. Well, I, I think I want to do a feud with Don. I'll work yeah. and I'll, uh, I will want you to work with Sammy. Well, we'll work that into my feud with Don. Okay. Is Kenny still feuding with Don? Yeah, he can come along. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, he even talked about like when he did the J, the JAS, that was supposed to be him and Eddie Kingston as a tag team. And then like Moxley or somebody came up with the idea for him to turn back heel instead. It's like, yeah, he was trying because that was like when Eddie was at his most popular. So of course Jericho was going to somehow weasel his way into that, and they were going to be a babyface tag team. I was like, oh, <laughs> this guy, man, like, like sometimes he can still like when he's a goofball heel, I still can find him pretty entertaining at times. Sure, babyface Jericho, man, just just the pits. Well, also we know too way too much about his personal life now. <laughs> that's, that's true. He was just a fun rock and roll wrestler guy for a couple of decades. It was all right. But now we know he has problematic political opinions. His sure. wife was at the Capitol on January 5th. He sure was. He gives money to um, Republican candidates, whichever side you real, fall on there. Under yeah. his real name and his and his gimmick name, possibly violating campaign finance laws. <laughs> right. He only has one wife, no matter how many photos you see of him making out with other women or hear stories about him uh, getting keys to other women's hotel rooms. Sure. Um, he only has one wife and he only ever has relations with her. That's right. Absolutely. Um, we know all these things about about his personal <laughs> life now. It just makes it. I don't know. Also, yeah. like I said, I, like I said, I think even in AEW, though, like like uh, him as a heel buffoon. I can still find some enjoyment in that. But when he, yeah, when he tries to be like a hero, I, <laughs> I draw the line. Yes, that's fair. Um, anyway, we'll see how this plays out. Now he's sure. wrestling powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, sure. I, he's got to put Hobbs over. I mean, it's Hob- <laughs> I mean, this is Hobbs' third faction this year. <laughs> so, look. If you like AEW, that's fine. Don't pretend it's well booked. Please don't try to sell me that line. <laughs> Please don't sell me that line. <laughs> no, it's 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 not. There's it's a collection of entertaining wrestling matches. Yeah, <laughs> with very little connective tissue between them. <laughs> yeah, I think there are good storylines at times, but I don't think it's an overall well booked show. I think that would be a very hard case to make if you if you were. Thank going you. to attempt to make that. Um, Thank you. But yes, Thank you. it's long story short. <laughs> Chris, Chris Jericho and Kenny and Coda is it is the darndest thing that I have seen Coda Bushi wrestle like five times this year. Yeah. And the best match I've seen him have was against Joey Janela at like 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday of WrestleMania weekend. And it went like... Uh... They went Is that the one where he went like eight minutes or something? No, they went long. They went like I think okay. they went like twenty five. He d- he did like a six minute match or six or eight minute match with uh, Mike Blood Bailey Sport. on Mike Bailey on the Blood Sport show. That was all right too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I knew he worked like an eight minute match that weekend, but I I didn't remember which was which. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's done. He's done. Happens to everybody. Maybe he needs to. Uh, he and Tanahashi both need to take some muscle off and uh, do some DDP yoga. Yeah, and uh, just do whatever Trish Stratus does. <laughs> and and they can be uh, they can be good in their late forties. Yeah, start a lifestyle brand. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Trish, by the way, on her Bad Girl tour. <laughs> that of uh, signings and appearances. Oh, okay. <laughs> no signings and appearances. It's called the Bad Girl Tour in San Antonio this weekend. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to plug it. Okay. Check out TrishStratus.com for dates. <laughs> All right. Um, back to Russell Dream. FTR in the semi-main went 20 minutes with Aussie Open. I think there was some good stuff here. I think it went too <laughs> long. 
Yeah, I think uh, trying to trying to match the match they had in New Japan last year that everybody raved about, but not a lot of people saw because it was on a fight TV show that you had to pay forty dollars for, and then didn't get added to New Japan World until like three months later. Yeah, um, maybe, and also just being this late in the card probably didn't do him any favors either. Nobody has Aussie Open done anything on the on these shows recently other than lose. <laughs> Also, before they got this match, um, I think they won on collision a couple times to set up this title match, but they didn't. Correct. Really, but they were just like, like they did jobs to MJF and Cole for the ROH belt. And then I think they lost to the Hardys or somebody. Like they, they had a fun promo segment too on collision. Okay. But, okay. So we've had uh, eight segments where they do jobs. <laughs> and then uh, we've had two good segments, three good segments on collision. Mm hmm. That uh, half people watch that that watch Dynamite, so. right? And again, that's not that's not any of the gentlemen involved's fault. <laughs> it's the person right. booking the show's fault, but right, yeah, I think I think maybe that and the the placement on the card hurt it a little bit. Sure, uh, and then we had the uh, Christian Darby main event. Um, a lot of good stuff. Also went too long, and uh, Darby took some of the stupidest bumps you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life, as you would expect, right? Entertaining as hell. Absolutely. Got to give him that. Uh, Christian is absolutely tremendous heel. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's just, he's just fantastic. I yeah. don't know what else to say. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's really tapped into something. Cause I, I thought during the Jack Perry feud, it was kind of a one note act. Yes. And he's, uh, he's fleshed it out in, very odd and specific ways that, uh, that make it <laughs> yes. maybe my most favorite uh, character in wrestling currently. <laughs> it's tremendous. He's great. Yeah. All right. So all of that set up Dynamite this week where uh, not a whole lot happened, but uh, they set up their Tuesday show, which goes head to head with the NXT uh, this coming week. They'll have Jericho versus Hobbs, Adam Copeland's debut against the Luchasaurus, number one contender Jay White versus Hangman Page, TNT Championship number one contender Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. That's a good match. Yeah. Why are they wrestling uh, for the TNT belt? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's Jay White's turn, I think. I guess. International Championship, Ray Phoenix and Moxley are going to have a do-over. <laughs> and uh, women's world title, uh, Soraya against Hikaru Shida. Yeah, I mean, they're that's up as loaded and a dynamite as we've had in a long time, uh, for, for obvious reasons. Uh, yep. they're, they're going against NXT, an NXT that is uh, dripping with uh, with star powers, we'll get to in a minute. So nobody wants to lose. Uh, yep. So we'll see. I think I think AEW is going to lose, but uh, you know they're they're not punting. <laughs> you know they're on a different night with with direct competition. They could very easily just just completely punt the show and say, well, it doesn't count. Um, but they're they're trying. They're they're loading it up so. We'll see. They are. NXT has uh, Carmelo Hayes with John Cena in his corner. <laughs> John Cena is working <laughs> Tuesday nights. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd see it? Absolutely not. It, you know, it's and except for this exact scenario. <laughs> so uh, Carmelo Hayes with Cena in his corner against Braun Breaker, who will have Heyman in his corner. <laughs> so, um, Yep, Roxanne Perez versus Asuka. Mm -hmm. And um, Cody Rhodes will make a major announcement. Which that is, is a great bit of banter, isn't it? It's a tremendous rib. <laughs> you take the guy who works for the guy who's made more major announcements than anyone, and you announce that he's going to make a major announcement. It's beyond incredible. <laughs> tremendous, yes, tremendous banter. I would it's just that good, that's... clean fun. Exactly. That's the thing about this. What we talked about <laughs> back during the, the heyday of the Wednesday Wars. It's fun when these companies snipe at each other and yes. try to counter program each other. It's good. It's good fun. This is how it should be. <laughs> yes. 
All righty. Um, as you mentioned, WWE somehow has a pay per view this weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, 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 despite I my don't... protests, <laughs> despite uh, my lobbying. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, uh, "What is this one? It's uh, it's not uh, payback. It's a fast lane, right? Mm-hmm. WWE car." <laughs> uh, right now, there are five matches announced for this program: um, the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest defending the tag team titles against Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso. I don't know, man. I assume we're getting uh, the Judgment Day. With uh, JD McDonut against Cody Uso and uh, Kevin and Sammy in the War Games next month. Oh um, yeah. Um, I thought they were going to maybe do the Judgment Day against the Bloodline at some point because the Bloodline were all over SmackDown for a while there. But I think it's giving them too much credit, or they change plans, change you know, I guess. Sure, sure. But uh, Cody and Jay going for the tag team titles doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but okay. Whatever you want to do, fine. LWO against Lashley and the Street Profits. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Lashley is like um player coach now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's like uh if he's done or what exactly the deal is there. I mean, Bobby is shockingly old. It's true. Uh, uh yeah, so I don't know if he's uh he's forty seven years old now. Right. He uh, so I don't know get, if he... started to get hurt a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they're phasing him down or what. You know. Uh, Io Sky defending the women's title against Oscar and Charlotte Flair. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe Charlotte's a, a try. Clearly, yeah, she's clearly the worst worker in that match. Uh huh. Uh, John Cena and LA Knight versus Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa. Really pushing the greatest of all time, John Cena. Babe Ruth of wrestling. That's right. All these all these things. And then uh, Seth freaking Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Last man standing for the World Heavyweight title. Seth won the first match clean. So mm-hmm. then they bring it back with a stipulation, <laughs> which... Doesn't make a bit of sense. Where Seth had to convince Nakamura to take the match. Correct. He was begging the heel. To Get take back the here match. and kick my ass. Yes. And uh, so, but to make up for the fact that Seth won the first match clean, Nakamura has just laid out Seth in every angle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I guess that's one way of booking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's particularly effective, but okay. No, it's, it's, Feels pretty par for the course for October WWE booking, even in this uh, this uh, this uh, Paul Paul Bruce regime. We still just doesn't matter what we did in the last show; just do it again. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the uh, the holiday tour tickets uh, went on sale last week, and mm-hmm. I'm going to um, the day after Christmas. I'm going to the house show here and uh, in Baltimore. Um, I don't have a hookup for WWE comp tickets yet. Mm. Um, putting that on the universe, that sure would be swell. Like, I think I could get, I'm almost positive I could get media credentialed for WrestleMania, but there's no, um, process aside from shows like WrestleMania. Come on. You gotta, anyway, I'm not paying uncle Nick Khan's, um, uh, official platinum ticket prices this year. So I'm sitting with the pores. <laughs> For the holidays, uh-huh. man of the people. And if I'm not mistaken, you told me there's a MSG show that same night. Correct. So it'll be the Street Profits against the LWO <laughs> main eventing. <laughs> sure. Got Xavier Woods and the Miz in the semi main. <laughs> it's just like, uh, look, it's really hard to have a bad time at house shows. It's the first house show here in two years mm-hmm. since uh, the time Tony Storm quit. <laughs> <laughs> Said Tony, you want to go to Baltimore? She said, uh, <laughs> "I for one choose unemployment." <laughs> it's like, you want any proof that God hates me? <laughs> the day I was supposed to see one of my like five favorite wrestlers in the world wrestle for live for the first time, she got on a plane and flew herself home. <laughs> was she supposed to wrestle Sasha too? It was supposed to be a three way with Charlotte, Sasha, and Tony Storm. <laughs> Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Classic. 
All right. Uh, that's WWE NXT we mentioned, which is going to head to head to head to head, to head with um with uh, Dynamite on Tuesday. Um, only other item I wanted to cover. Uh, I think it's become clear with uh, Mercedes Monet out uh, injured. Although I should know she's no longer in a walking boot, so mm. could be coming up coming back soon. Uh, Becky Lynch is the only one of the four horsewomen who can still go at this point. <laughs> I think that's a fair point. And she got, uh, got Tiffany Stratton, uh, through a, a pretty solid and, and fun hardcore brawl match on, uh, on the NXT show over the weekend. So uh, a good feather in her cap, I thought. Yep. And then they, uh, they took her out of the ring on Monday cause she had a, uh, her arm was oh, it's just absolutely disgusting. <laughs> absolutely, did you see that? I uh, don't think I did. She had a laceration on her arm, and mm. she posted a photo of it, and it was just like guts leaking out of her arm. Yikes! <laughs> Sounds terrible. Looked even worse. <laughs> anyway, check that out. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's about all I got. Is there anything else you uh, you want to cover here? We uh, we've been off for a while. It's true. No, I'm sure. I'm sure there's things we're uh, we're forgetting. Hey, Johnny Gargano came back this week. Oh yeah, that's right. And they accidentally mistimed the show and cut off their <laughs> their uh, the DIY uh, ta- tag team finish. But do yes. do we know who's booking these shows these days? Just because <laughs> there are a lot of elements from this week's Raw, like Johnny Gargano coming out and mm-hmm. uh, Tommaso Ciampa being in the main event. And Gargano and Champa reuniting as a tag team that would point to heavy uh, Paul Levesque influence, mm-hmm. and then there's stuff, there's stuff like um, the constant uh, nicknames, and um, I can't think of of any more uh, uh, example. Anyway, Dragon Lee being all over the, every show. He's been on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just there's a lot of elements that point to Paul having these being Paul shows. But we know Vince is still there. So, like, what is who's booking these shows? Well, maybe just like over the years, Vince clearly doesn't care about the shows from September to <laughs> January. <laughs> Yeah. So maybe he's just as a little treat, he's gonna let Paul book uh his his show for, for the next couple of months and then he'll he'll get the reins back when it's time to start building for the rumble. You're gonna get a big stinky giant for uh Cody to be <laughs> almost Cody and, almost Cody, and, Cody yep. at a house show. It's coming. Yep. Sure is. Um Let's see. There's more. Oh, Jade Cargill signed with WWE. That's is right. this anything? Uh, I assume she's gonna. Get, she'll be a big star there. Yeah, that's that's the place that she should be. <laughs> I don't. Yes. I don't think there was any way she was going to improve. Like I think she was a really fun te- television character in AEW. Um, it's the same. She can't say the S word anymore. Yes. Um, because that was funny. But uh, yeah, she will be a mega star if they're. Uh, if they don't completely, uh, if they don't intentionally accentuate the things she's not good at, they should right. be a a mega star. Well, she can't, she can't really work. But there's no company where that matters less. Exactly. Right. And she can do everything else. She could talk. She could stand there and look great. There right. What she has to do? Get through a ninety second match on, <laughs> on SmackDown once every three weeks. She could do that. Test a strength spot with Nia Jax. Exactly. It'll be fun. Nia Jax is back too. That's right. Dwayne came back while we were gone. That's right. The first show of the Endeavor era. I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't either. His good friend Nick Khan. Yep. Uh, they cut like 20 people. Mm-hmm. Dolph Ziggler finally went home. Yep. Good riddance. <laughs> He's apparently a very generous person in real life. And and you've, uh, you've never met anyone who said a bad word about Dolph Ziggler, except for me. <laughs> That's <laughs> I've right. I said bad words about Dolph Ziggler. Right. Well, he could be a super obnoxious person and a terrible wrestling character, and Correct. I, I guess, and a bad stand-up comedian. I, I kid when I say I'm happy that he lost his job. 
But um, yeah, it's that feels like the end of an era of guys like him uh, who were just going to be around forever as the the thumbs up guy for right. the, the NXT call ups coming up and things like that. Just, you know, every, everybody's first program was was with Ziggler for a while there. So, yes, um, uh, you know, he and I guess he unlike uh, Bob Rude and whoever else, he didn't uh, try to transfer into a uh, agent job. So it's time to hit the bricks, I guess. Ali, Dana Brooke, Ma- Ma- Masse and Mansois. Mm-hmm. Those guys should get a comedy run. They should they should go on the road. I guess they're gonna be an impact, I bet, right? Those guys, those guys are like tailor made for doing yeah, sound sticky impact comedy with Heath Slater and Fandango and whoever. Yeah, it sounds seems like that would work. Ali, I guess people were clamoring for this years ago, and then he just went back to WWE and did <laughs> He's average to below average work for two more years. I mean, it's fascinating because he wanted to leave in an era where they had started to cut people when they asked for their release after yes. refusing to do that for several years, yes. but for some reason would not cut him. Yes. So it felt personal. <laughs> yes. With him and Vince for some reason. Well, and we know the reason, right? Well, because Vince wanted him to wear a turban and. Play and terror. be behind 9 11. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you actually imagine? Unbelievable. Yes, because, <laughs> because, because I know Vince McMahon, but uh, <laughs> unbelievable. I wanted him to be a, one of the masterminds of 9 11 attacks <laughs> in a storyline. Uh huh. Oh, and Riddle, and Riddle, they finally separated. Oh, yeah. Now that guy, I am glad he's gone. Uh, just seems like a bad person. Yeah, um, just a just a real kind of old school pro wrestling dirtbag by all accounts. You yeah, know? like the type of guy who would have been right at home in like the 1985 world class locker room. Very much so. And you could say, well, at the ver- at giving him the benefit of the doubt, giving him every benefit of every doubt. Mm. This is a man with personal problems that needs time away from wrestling to get his life in order. Sure. That's giving him every benefit of the doubt. Right. I don't feel the need to write a cover story on why every other company should give him a shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very strange. Yeah, it was a interesting strategy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, very dumb. All righty. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. That's it for me. Do you have anything else? No, I think that uh, that about wraps things up. All right. Sounds good. Well, I uh, hope you continue to recover from COVID. And uh, thanks, listener, for uh, listening. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> yep. All right. Till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with episode 350 of The Wrestling Life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. We we out here. How's your COVID snot? Oh, uh, we're we're getting a little better, I think. So the the timeline of my COVID was like that Sunday that I was dog sitting for you. Woke up feeling kind of sick. Yeah. Every subsequent day from like Monday to Wednesday felt worse every day. Mm-hmm. Thursday feel a little bit better. Friday start to feel like a good bit better, and I'm like, all right, we're getting out of it. And then I stayed how I felt on Friday for the next six days. I see. And I just felt exhausted and still a little bit snotty and then coughing a little bit. And then today I finally feel like a little bit better and a little bit less exhausted. So we'll see if this now lasts another seven days or if 
I'm actually, actually getting better now. We'll, uh, we'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> we shall see. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm getting on a plane in a few days, so. Oh, that sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, no, just get <laughs> double COVID. It's fine. You going to a baseball game? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm going down to Florida. You know, we live, we learn, we don't go. We, yes, exactly. Never go skiing. Um, do you? Ha- hmm? a cheap cheat. I forgot. Sorry, we're just we'll just vamp. <laughs> it's three forty nine. I know that. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we'll just vamp. Sounds good. Um, Edge is the big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, um, NXT versus AE Dub next. Yeah, Tuesday. yeah, we could fill. 45 hours just on that and then there's a somehow another fucking wwe show this weekend <laughs> yeah that's right that's in fact correct <coughs> but one o'clock p.m on a saturday afternoon mm, that that would be tough for me anyway <laughs> <laughs> it works out for me because uh at 8 p.m i need to be in philadelphia for uh the Australian comedy group Auntie Donna is uh is doing a show that I'm nice. Doing. So you're just fucking traveling the world. Yeah, I it's like what a time to book like the busiest week of my life. Right. Um coming out of uh <laughs> a sickness that just makes me tired and not want to ever leave the house. I try to keep on keeping on.